You're watching Pegarai TV, Rhode Island's public access channel. about how to make your life spring and summer ready after getting over the dreary cold winter season. One of the first things I like to do to get into the spirit, not only by dressing for spring and summer, is to bring in elements that represent that in my home. One very simple, easy way you can do that is with picture frames. So, I have some of my most favorite colorful picture frames pink, yellow, I've got this multicolor one and another multicolor one here that kind of mirror each other. And they have pink, white, yellow, orange, all the colors that you think about when you're thinking of spring and summer. So do you have to switch out all of your picture frames? Absolutely not. My focus is always the fireplace. Why? Because it's the first area where most people look and it is the focal point of every room. So I'm going to display these photos on my fireplace. One of the things I always like to do with my pictures is come up with pictures that fit the theme of the season. This photo is a photo of me and my fiance in Ibiza when we went to Spain for the summer. So it represents the summer, obviously. And then we also have a picture here from our trip to LA. I've got some other pictures here with my mom for Easter and also a uh, past Mother's Day. You can take so many different photos and frame them in some cool spring and summer frames. Really doesn't matter. Um, one of the things that you can also do is make sure that you have a set of frames that kind of work together. I chose two different themes, one being a multicolor, which are these, and then the solid cover as well. So what I'm going to do now is place some of my favorite photos in them and you can see what we're going to do next once we display them on the fireplace. Oh, and remember, when you're cutting your pictures, make sure that you cut them in a way so the photo is centered. You don't want to be all the way off on the edge or not all the way to the center of the picture or heads cut off or stuff like that. Get your favorite pictures. And if you have family and friends coming over, use pictures that are going to identify those memories in their mind immediately. My mom was just here for Mother's Day, so I had out some Mother's Day photos from the previous years that brought back memories and thoughts to her mind of those times. And it really is a conversation piece when you're having parties and friends and family are coming to your home. Just these little simple things can help bring a whole new energy into your home to celebrate the spring and summer season. Okay, so now we have our frames displayed on my fireplace. And if you can see, I chose to do them going vertical and also going horizontal. That gives just a little bit of diversity in the mix. Instead of all your frames going up and down, you want to have a little bit of a mix of styles and also the way that they're framed. The other thing that I've noticed now that I've placed my pictures is that it's still a little bare. So another way that you can add elements of spring to your home, not only through these lovely picture frames, is by adding other accessories. You can choose from anything from a little adornments of whatnots that fit the season, or you can do something like candles. It really depends on what your preference is. So, now you see that I've added my lovely spring picture frames to my fireplace, and I'm already getting that spring feeling. But I wanted to mix it up by adding some other additional elements. I chose candles. 
You can do scented candles, which are these sunflower ones that you see here, which I like them because I love sunflowers. They bring in the color yellow, which again represents spring and summer. And they are just perfect with my picture frames. Now, if you don't like scented candles, there are colored candles that are unscented that you can buy at any store in your area. But what I like about the candles is that they frame the pictures that are here. And you have different levels. When you're displaying any art pieces, photos, whatnots, you want to have different heights and a little bit of diversity in the mix of how you display them. The candles are at the highest level, if you notice. And then here, we have our pictures, and then you get a little more height in these. And I did them also going vertical and horizontal. So it depends on what you really would like to do. You can even mix them and do your taller candles on the edges with shorter candles going on the inside. It really is whatever you want to make it. And have fun with it. Even if you want to do multicolor candles, maybe one yellow, one blue, one pink, one orange, anything goes. This is your home. Have fun with it. Represent the colors that make you happy and inspire you. These small little things can get you in the spirit of enjoying the spring and summer and getting out of the winter blues. Another way to add spring into your home is through floral arrangements and plants. I love flowers, and I mean, who doesn't want to get them any time of the week, right? But do consider other options when you're bringing in any color in the form of plants or flowers into your home. I chose a wild orchid. Why? Wild orchids are really beautiful flowers, and they last for months and months as long as you give them sunlight, water, and a little love and affection. This one I've had since February, and as you can see, it's really still alive and beautiful and adds that life and also that element of spring and summer into the home. You can do them in purple, as I chose. They also come in white. I've even seen some in yellows and green colors. So it's a really fun plant, but you still get flowers at the same time that don't die in a week and you get to enjoy for months and months into the summer. So think about it. Wild orchids. Good plant and still with flowers. So do you ever have pillows that you spent so much money on and they're very decorative and you can't wash them? Or better yet, they can only be sponge washed or wiped in spots, not even dry clean. What do you do? You cover them with a pillowcase. You can get these anywhere from discount stores to some of your favorite department stores. You don't have to trash the pillow and buy a whole brand new one. Just get a pillow cover. This one I got at a discount store for a dollar. And I love it because it has a little element of shimmer which I always like to have because a little glimmer makes you feel fabulous and happy. And it's great because I got this pillow for a lot of money. It's a silk pillow. And I felt at this point that even though I've washed it by hand and gotten little spots and things off of it, it just looks a little dingy and not as nice as I would like it to look. Uh, and why should I throw it away? when I can just cover it and have a whole brand new look. So now, with my new pillow cover, not only have I saved money, but I've saved from having to buy a whole new pillow. So this is something that you should definitely think about when you're buying your pillows for your bed or even your couch, your chairs, furniture. Things can always be reupholstered you can always give brand new life to something old. How many of you out there read fashion magazines? <laughs> I definitely do, and I know a lot of you out there do too. But how can you put your magazine to use after you've read it, picked out everything that you want to get at the mall, and the new issue is out? Other than trash it, ah, oh, there's something you can do. 
You know the perfume pages that are in every magazine that you get? And some of the fragrances you like, some of them you don't. But they're basically there so that you can smell them. And they really actually add a great fragrance to the magazine itself. I used to smell the pages as a little girl because I loved all the different fragrances that would be in my favorite magazines. But now there is a way that I've thought of kind of recycling those magazines. I use the perfume pages as liners. Liners in my drawers, whether it's for lingerie, socks, sweaters, you'd be surprised how fragrant they are. Not only are you saving money, but in your own way you're recycling. Use your fabric pages wherever you want to use them. Uh, the perfume pages are really great um, if you find your favorite fragrance because you can now have that smell up your whole drawer um, and even if it's fragrances that you not sure if you like or not it's a good way to kind of test it out because once you open it you really get that fragrant smell especially in closed areas like drawers or your gym bag um, any compartment that's small just try it and see uh, how you like it for yourself but I think it's a pretty good way of recycling and getting free fragrance in the places that you love. So you want a sweet treat, but you don't want to deal with the calories later. My solution? Berries. During this time of the year, spring, summer, my favorite berries are always so sweet and really available all year round. Raspberries blackberries, and strawberries for what I like to call berry berry salad. What you need is just to get all your different berries together. Very simple, but you want to make sure that you cut them into little pieces. By cutting them into little pieces, I don't know, it just seems more appetizing. So I cut up my strawberries into fours. I usually like to take off the little green parts. And I cut up my blackberries and my raspberries into halves. Because you don't want them to fall apart and then it gets all kind of soggy, which isn't really great when you're trying to have a fresh, uh, simple, non messy <laughs> salad. And what I like about berries also is that, you know, they're so sweet and they're filled with antioxidants, so they're really good for you. So you get in the best of both worlds. You don't feel like you're cheating as much. Once I get all my berries together and I cut them up, sometimes I add things like kiwi. And kiwi is great because, again, it's one of those... It's really good for you and also super sweet. I like to kind of cut it out with a spoon. Uh, it, it's so much easier than having to deal with getting all those little hairs off of it when you're trying to peel it. And it usually comes out very easily with a spoon too. And then once I get it out, there you go. Skin peels off easily. And I usually cut this into a half and then again into fours since it's a bigger piece as well. Good thing also is that you can have this for dessert as a substitute for your ice cream or any of that kind of stuff. And also you can have it for breakfast. You just sprinkle a little granola on top. When I have it for dessert, I like to have it with whipped cream. So be right back to show you yummy berry berry salad. Bing! Just like that, I'm back. <laughs> so I got my berry berry salad, which I've topped with a light whipped cream. Of course, you can also top your berries with honey. Um, you can put, like I said before, your favorite cereal bar. Just crush it up and sprinkle a little on top and even eat it for breakfast. But, if you're going to do it with cream, I like to just cut it a little bit by just sprinkling a little bit of cinnamon. Cinnamon is really great for you. 
it's been, you know, connected to reducing the chance of cancer cells in the body. It also cuts against uh, a lot of the sugar that causes diabetes. So if you're going to have a little sweet, a little cinnamon can go a long way. And I am going to enjoy my fruit salad. One of the great ways to add light without fire in your home, especially if you have children, are these really cool little votives. They light up with a shade. The shade gives you fragrance and you still get the little flicker of light. I love these. Not more than my candles, but they're good in areas where things tend to get knocked down a lot, like your coffee table and end tables. That's where I like to put these. The cool thing also is that when the shade is off, the light goes off, so you save battery power too. But I have a yellow shade that it came with, which is cool, but I have a lot of yellow already going on in my theme. I kind of want to tie in some of the other elements. So what I'm going to do is make my own shade. The great thing is that you can make shades in any color just using construction paper. The light will still flicker through and you've got something that's creative and that you've made on your own. So the first thing that you want to do is make sure that your shade is the same size as the pre-existing one that comes with it. So we're going to cut the edges to fit. And the other thing that's really cool about this is that if you don't like scents, you can make your own shade with construction paper and you don't have to worry about the actual smell of the paper that comes with it. You can still get the illumination without the fragrance if that's something that you want. So I would say cut two of them and basically you're going to tape those ends together and fit them in properly. Once you've done that, you'll have your new shade. It's always fun for me doing these kinds of crafts projects because a lot of times you don't feel like doing anything that is DIY when you're already having so many other obligations to do. But something like this is really simple. It doesn't take too much time. And once you're done, you kind of feel proud of yourself that you've accomplished it. Now we're just fitting it around just to make sure. And that's good. So now after that, what you want to do is tape your edges. I would definitely suggest using a double stick tape. So we're going to double stick tape them and then you'll see our new custom votive shade all done and in orange to match the picture frames that I have and still bringing in those elements of spring and summer. So, as you can see, my votive is done and I have a little bit of double stick tape on the inside. I actually follow the folds of the original shade so that I can get the same shape and it looks pretty good. The illumination is coming through and I really like the orange color because it's going to go great with my frames and everything that I'm displaying throughout the house to give the right kind of color scheme of bright colors for spring and summer. You can use any type of paper you want. It doesn't have to be construction paper. I've seen people use even printer paper in colors like pink or neon and do the same exact thing and get a really cool shade out of it. You can even add adornments like glitter or rhinestones or whatever you want. As long as you have fun and you like what you make at the end, that's the most important. So, I'll enjoy my new light and my candles, and I'll be seeing you soon. Let's talk trends. As a makeup artist and a model and an actress from New York, now here in Rhode Island, I'm all about fashion trends. And since we're in the spring-summer season, what more important than to talk about the nail polish? Your feet are finally back out in flip-flops and sandals 
And not only that, but your hands are out too. No more winter gloves. Some of the really popular colors this season in nail polish are corals, pinks, bright oranges, and even kind of kooky colors like greens, aquas, sky blues. And really, you can go any way with it. You can do light pinks, or you can go all the way to a pink, hot pink. It really is your comfort level. I always recommend start off with one coat, see how you like it, and if you feel like it's good enough at that shade, then put a clear coat on and call it a day. If you want the color to be more vivid, then apply usually another coat. Two coats, never three, because you usually get bumps after that. Another suggestion is if you have the type of work or job where you feel like bright colors aren't really acceptable, then you can always just paint your toes. Normally, most people wear closed toe shoes in work environments and things like that anyway. So you can still enjoy your playful colors on your feet and have more of a neutral nail polish on your hands. One of the things that I always recommend as well is making sure that you're using a really good base on your nails before polishing them. Because the worst thing that can happen is when you're using colored nail polishes is that your nails tend to turn yellow and get a little brittle because the actual nail polish itself can damage the nails. So you want to make sure that you're putting a really good base coat on that has nutritional you know, factors in it that are helping to nourish the nails and also making sure that you're using a really good nail polish remover that's not drying out your nails either and helping to strengthen them. Once you've done that, you can do any of the colors that I've mentioned and start off with really pretty spring, summer toes and highlight all of my spring, summer decor and of course my lovely orchid. I found this picture that matches perfectly. This is actually a black and white photo of an orchid that was turned into a lovely, long, beautiful frame. And the great thing about this is it's all year round or you can just bring it out for the spring. But it kind of ties everything together and it's a really great art piece to add to your home. There are so many photos that you can find like this at any of your local department stores. You can do floral arrangements, you can do the beach, sun, any elements that you feel represent spring and summer. And when you look at the orchid, it makes you have that feeling. Or at least it does for me. Want to know another way to get out of the winter blues? Music. Download some of your favorite songs from summers of the past, summers that are your favorite memories and make a cool album out of it. Play it in your car, play it at the house. Every time you hear those songs, you'll always think of that time of year and it'll get you in the spring bling feeling. I love Spain and when I traveled there, listening to all of the Spanish guitars and all of that kind of music always makes me remember my trip when I was there but it also reminds me of the warm weather and everything that has to do with the summer and what makes it so vibrant and alive. So when I make my CDs, I like to incorporate those kind of tunes. Now you can go home and think about what songs you like and make up your own CD. When you're playing in your car or whether you're playing it at home, you'll have a little reminder to bring you out of the winter blues. So, what do you do with your cards after you've enjoyed them and read them? Display them. They're a great element to add life and color to your home. I like to display mine on the fireplace. You can also display them on your end tables, on window sills. It's really up to you. I also take cards from the past as well and display those. I think that it adds just a different element of memories again and also adding to that color factor of your home and getting you in the spirit of the spring and summer season. 
I have an Easter card that I got, so I'll be putting that out. And just a thank you card from some family that came. But the colors are really perfect for what I'm going for in my home decor. So I'm going to put them out. And if you get any cards this season, definitely after reading them and enjoying them, you can continue to enjoy them by having them placed out in your home. These are just a couple things that you can do to add spring and summer to your home. And after you're done, you'll have time to have some berry berry salad. I hope you enjoy our show, and until next time, live life.